Hello YouTube, thanks for watching. Today we are checking out Mosaic version 14. Before we do that, we just need to discuss business. We are no longer Hillcrest Cabinets, we are Cab Forge Systems. We are trying to diverge those two things. Cap Hillcrest is our cabinet shop and Cab Forge System is our technology division where we make cool stuff for cabinet making. Now, in today's video, we'll be going over Mosaic version 14 and what is new, what is improved, and what you need to know. All right, let's get into it. All right, here we are in Mosaic version 14. Your first question is, is it production ready? Um, it's currently in open beta version, what is it, eight? Open beta eight. Um, we have been using it for, we've been using even the previous beta versions for uh, th two weeks now. Uh, in production mode with running cabinets, cutting parts. I haven't really seen anything, there's a few little tweaks that I think were fixed in this version uh, beta 8. So I would say go for it. It's worth it. There's some good improvements in here that are worth upgrading for. Um, first and foremost, the biggest change they have made in version 14 is the materials library. Um, I feel like a lot of us have had some pain points with this materials system. So I can tell that Sinkly is taking the time to try and fix what was sort of a little bit messy in the past. So kind of nice this way that they've done some improvements to this. Um, you can see that now there is this material property section on the right side here. You have the same width trim, all of that stuff happening on the side. Um, one thing that I wish they would do is make the materials thicknesses have just a drop down, kind of like this textures, texture group thing. Um, it would be nice if it was just, it would really simplify some of these materials. Like all of these could be collaborated into a single row here. If it just chain, you change the thickness and then this material properties, this is suggesting to mosaic, do that. Um, you know, that would just clean this up a lot. But anyways, not where we're at today. So texture groups is another big update. Um, I can't quite put my finger on what the reasoning for the having, like, I'm not sure if they're fighting. I don't know. It's just a little bit compl complicated. Maybe I'm just not used to it yet, but whatever. It, it is what it is. So you have different texture groups. You can set, say like you have uniboard colors or what are you, the American ones, Egger. Um, you can text, set that whole texture group to all uniboard colors or whatever. I have one that's interior colors and then particle core as the edge component because the cool thing is you can have edge colors now so that uh, it tells you, you'll know what's getting edge banded and what is not. So that's that. Uh, we have interior colors. You can add other ones. You can add like interior, exterior colors. You can add unibor colors. You can add uh, Tafisa colors, whatever the colors are that you're using. You can ha kind of just simplify the textures themselves. So it's not such a messy menu when you're trying to pick colors. So there's that. And then to apply it, you basically go over here and you add your face color. And then if you want to have an edge color, you check this display edge component and then you select an edge. So if you have MDF, perhaps you want to have MDF that has an edge component that's a different color or whatever, you can do that. You can also have two colors, two sided colors um, as an option as well. So Mosaic should render a lot more cleanly as opposed to before. The colors that are showing up in Mosaic are what you should expect in real life. So yeah, 
some changes in here like I said this texture groups uh, that would be the first thing material templates is different so we're gonna go I'm not gonna change save any changes material templates once I changed it wasn't really much all the templates kind of just pulled across so it wasn't it's not like I had to rebuild any templates or anything um, this I feel like could use a lot of help in future updates hopefully um, the only way that I found to be the most uh, the the least complicated because you can get a if you want to make sure all your materials come out this in the proper format you can really create a lot of mess in your in your material templates library so what I try to do is just simplify it I give it you know you get painted material solid color one to solid color two it's not perfect far from it but it's better than what we have done in the past I found that if I started adding all the different colors like I probably I only really use these ones that have the one in front of it to keep it at the top of the list but it would be like okay now I'm gonna add uniboard this then I'm gonna add this then I'm gonna add this material this for this customer and started getting really messy and then I just deleted it all and started with just this so that I could use you know painted material matching interior interior so it's all literally all MDF uh, white interior this is me just showing you my material templates um, but you know you get the idea what's changed change texture you can make it override the texture here uh, for certain ones for the most part it's pretty close to the same other than the fact that you now have kind of like uh, these openable collapsible menus here so yeah pretty much pretty close the same but nothing too dramatic um, what else we got let's check out the 3d viewer that's a new one so I'm gonna open up a job here which one do I want let's go for this one loading 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 take your time okay here we are and we go into products so there's two two things to show first is the 2d view shows colors now and by default it's not going to be activated but you can see you got the fridge color the door color this is huge I feel like this is something that's going to help a lot of people so in order to activate that you have to go to view layers and by default it would be this so we're going to select filled with texture color and save that as your defaults and to do that you go to drawing settings change this from that to that save as a default save to template user defaults and then it will be your default so that's the first thing you have this 2d view with colors rendered the next thing is the new 3d viewer which is way superior to the old one I believe this is a lot closer to what SketchUp would do. Whoops. Yeah, I can tell this is a lot more like SketchUp. You can actually zoom around. You can trouble doing that in the old viewer. So I'm pretty sure they are rendering with a lot more SketchUp's tools than before you can really zoom in it's a little bit more realistic which is kind of cool you can do a view like that uh, you this is uh, so I'm not sure if this rendering capability is out in the world yet but I am subscribed to it and it's grayed out so I don't know how why not but can't check that yet but it is a feature that's supposed to be included in this um, I believe oh this there's different types of like panning systems I guess if you're assuming you're standing in the room you can sort of move around um, view 
spin around, just different, you know, sort of techniques for rotating the model. There's also in these settings, let's just drag this window over. There's also some lighting controls, camera controls, HDR, exposure. You can mess with sort of all the camera settings that you typically could do with V-Ray or any of those fancy rendering systems. So that's another thing. Then we have the rendering thing, which I can't test. There's some new CAD tools. So if, for example, you have CAD system, or if you, sorry, if you click this CAD button, it activates a lot of these annotation tools. So for example, you can draw just straight up lines and such. There's a lot of different things that people will find useful in here that will, um, you know, notation tools, which I kind of like. I much prefer that over this, I feel like. That's better than the old note method that we used to use. The QR code tool, if you want to add QR codes. There's, you know, various different CAD tools here. I feel like if that's something you guys are interested in, I could make a full video on that. Like the CAD tools aren't something that I typically use. So I don't know if that's something you guys use or not, but obviously some people are using it. So it's not added in there. So uh, what else we got? I think the most important thing in here um, now is really this sort of, to me, this notes thing. There's a dimension tool. I did notice that when you activate the, let's turn this off. Before it was a, you had the super snap. Oh, they fixed it in this recent update, but it would automatically turn on the CAD tools when you turn super snapping on. So I don't know, mm, snap off, super snapping. Yeah, CAD tools turn on. So to note, so one thing I found interesting is, so I'm trying to dimension this with, you know, better snapping accuracy. So I've dimensioned that. Now I'm done and I want to try and click a cabinet. You have to double click it to exit out of the CAD tools. Otherwise it's, it'll like, if you go, if you're in the CAD tools and you try and click a cabinet, nothing happens. But if you double click, it lets you out. So that's one thing. What else have we got? Multiprint stuff. Um, you can change fonts. That was the same as before. Uh, Syncly payments. I guess Syncly's doing stuff to allow payments. Sadly, I live in Canada. We don't have the access, so I can't try it. Uh, updated data, so that's just, uh, you know, different drawer slides and stuff. So yeah, for for me, I like to sort of cut through the mud of all the different doodads and whatnot for the updates and just tell you what's most important to you. One is probably the rendering capabilities when that comes available. Two is turning on this color filled with texture color. Um, layer that is very important to me. That is a huge update and I wish they had that forever ago Another one is the new rendering not rendering but the 3d viewer in here. That is a huge update as well so pretty much oh Here's another one So you can see where the color texture we have these so before we updated this recently, but uh, we used to add a little bit to the top of our cabinets so that you can nail your scribe to it. And you so you push this up and then you nail that in, but never would edge the top. So because this material is showing as the particle core texture, you know that doesn't need edging right from the model, which is really nice. Same with over here. Top of the backs also don't get edged as well. So yeah, and then if you scroll to the underside where we do edge, 
you can see it is the correct color. Yeah, so, you know, great capabilities of the 3D viewer. I really like that. It's a lot better than what we had before. So, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching this time, guys. Uh, I would highly encourage you to download version 14 and get your hands dirty. It's not as bad as, or not as bad. It's not as scary of an update as you would think because of all the material things. I didn't really find I had to do much to make it work. It was just pretty much right out of the box work normally as the other stuff. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have yourselves a great one. If you're eager to dive deeper into Mosaic, enhance your shop, or explore the possibilities with CNC routers and 3D printing, you're in the right place. Your feedback drives our content, so subscribe to stay updated with the latest tutorials and tips. Watch out for our next video.